Welcome back, everyone, to the Sunday Spotlight. And tonight, Chaos Reigns. BioRand is an ambitious mod compilation for the first three Resident Evil games. A massive randomizer for all three with optional HD packs and some QOL improvements for the PC. The mod actually comes with the original games. Available on their site, BioRand.net. The lead programmer is listed as one Intel Orca, with contributions from others in animations, testing, modeling, UI tweaks, and so on. Now, we've played with randomizers before on the channel, specifically the uh, remake of the first game, and it's a popular mod concept for other games in the series as well. But there hasn't been anything quite like this. A single user-friendly package with extensive customization, with development still ongoing as bugs get found. I actually discovered this not long before GOG put up the original three games for sale, and I don't believe the originals ever received the PC port, so they were previously quite hard to find. I've been meaning to pick the classic Resident Evil 2 back up, so I figured why not spice it up a little. And boy does this deliver. I want to show off the config window here, broken down by game with a ton of options in each one. Like, uh, here, let's... Uh, show uh, the first Resident Evil here. So yeah, apart from just mixing up item placements and uh, item and enemy placements, you can control the likeliness of particular creature and item spawns, change the ratio of health and ammo, randomize doors, change enemy skins. You've got music from across the series that's going to be randomly spliced in. They, they We've got cutscenes that might randomly trigger. There's options right here to allow any character's voice from, yeah, presumably anywhere else in the game, regardless of how long it is or whether it even fits in the cutscene. <laughs> it's on a 60 stream streak. Nice, nice. Uh, what was this other mod? Right, this option cuts down on... This option tries to make sure that the length of the line closely matches what should be there. You've got door randomizers. We can swap... Uh, the player character models. This is basically the Deus Ex Malkavian mod, but for Resident Evil. We won't be going Total Chaos. We'll be playing Resident Evil 2, Claire A, Leon B. We'll stick with Claire, but I think we'll slot in the... Uh, slot under Code Veronica model for funsies. Why not? The rest... Yeah, let's see. You know what? Screw it. We'll leave the rest on by default and just see how crazy this goes. Now... Cast your mind, if you will, to the faraway land of January... <laughs> yeah, X is gonna give it to you. Oh, just wait. Just you wait. But yeah, cast your mind, if you will, to the faraway land of January 1998. Nobody knows this year will include StarCraft, Baldur's Gate, Ocarina of Time, Thief, Banjo-Kazooie, Metal Gear Solid, Half-Life, Xenogears, Grim Fandango, Unreal. That, that's the short list. It was a busy-ass year for games. But yeah, picture a young Carl Stoles popping this into his PS1 for the first time, and it's instead of what should be there, he gets all this shit instead. Let us generate a seed and get going. <laughs> I know, 1998 was stacked. The only thing that came close was 2000. Alright, so we are generating the seed here. So as you can see, it's going to be slotting in a lot of enemy skins for some of the standard enemies. Some of that won't be applicable here to uh, Resident Evil 2. But they cover a surprising amount of variety here from other games in the series. Like, you've got Lisa Trevor from the remake. You've got Mutated Steve from Code Veronica. You got, you got <laughs> of course, they worked in Lady D, so I think that's going to be Mr. X, which won't be a thing in Claire A, unfortunately, but that should be highly entertaining. And, yeah, it just the sheer variety and spread that they cover is unusual even by uh, randomizer standards. I'm very looking forward to this. Alright, successfully generated, run the game, choose BioRand, a Resident Evil randomizer from the mod selection. Rock and roll. Alright, let us begin. Alright, so yeah, if you got some nice PC wrapper options here, we'll go full screen, sound quality is high, uh, let's see, quick turn, force auto-aim. So yeah, these were not options in the very first Resident Evil, I think these were more of a thing in Resident Evil 2, and I think the director's cut for Resident Evil, but I can't remember. Anyway, uh, I believe we're okay, let us get going. Mods were detected, yes, BioRand. They do actually have the, the... The download package also has the vanilla games there if you want to simply play those. Again, this was before... This was released before the games were available for sale, so I don't know if they will keep them up there, but still a nice uh, place to get them all in one nice download package. Anyway, in we go. Left to just the volume there. 
That is definitely bringing me back. We'll let this play. It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to adjust the volume. I believe that can be done in game. Oh yeah, hang on a second. Way too loud. All right. This is weird. I launched it earlier and did set the volume down before, but hmm, I guess it counts the modded version as a separate executable or something like that. Anyway, yeah, I know. I, I'm 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 feeling I'm feeling it. I'm back in bit right back in 1998. Anyway, uh, right. All right. Let me just. All right. I think we're good. Let's get moving. All right. And now we're playing on <laughs> Okay, that's cute. I fought the fucked up family and was able to treat me as symptoms with the serum. Later on, I found out that she was infected by a special kind of mold. <laughs> I looked all over the house trying to find an antidote. All right, a vaccine, this apparently is anything. Be... Hang on a second. All right. The people who lived there were already infected. If I have to adjust this light volume them, slider, I will. Human. Then Chris Redfield and his soldier buddy showed up and saved the both of us. Okay, so this apparently is using the recap of Resident Evil 8, or of Resident course, Evil Village. ended up in the middle of nowhere, Louisiana. For this game. That's part of the randomized cutscenes thing. <laughs> Alright, so it's going to show the cu it's going to show the visual cutscenes for uh, Resident Evil 2, but the audio is going to be is going to be randomized, I think. Although this might be intact. We'll see how it plays out. Finally here. <laughs> you have Japanese subtitles, nice. That guy's a maniac. Why'd he bite me? So this at least is intact. Hello? Is anyone here? So I always kind of like that Leon and Claire's got different starting cutscenes in this, and your choice of who to play in Scenario A affects who's... It's actually kind of significant in a way. It, it, it basically comes down to an accident that's going to happen. I'll explain when we get there. Are you listening? Basically, they handle their shared stories pretty well on this. Uh, wait! Don't shoot! Get down! You consider in you the original... Head to the police station. It'll be a lot safer. They were working with, you know, just a little bit loud. Oh, shit. Oh, crap. Hang on a second. It's all right. I was trying to bring up the volume slider again, because it still felt a little loud, but then it inadvertently skipped the cutscene. Yeah, I fucked it, damn it. <laughs> Oh, uh, God. We're off to a running start. But look at this arsenal, on the other hand. So, yeah, one of the randomizer options is to start with random stuff instead of the knife and pistol we usually start with. <laughs> I click on... <laughs> I click somewhere, and now everything is on fire. Yeah. So, basically, what I was about to say is... The cool thing about Resident Evil 2... The uh, Scenario A, B stuff... Is... 
whoever starts scenario A is the person that ends up on one side of the car or the other, and the difference between who goes... The difference is basically how the car is hit in a cutscene. You know, Leon and Claire are, end up in a car, and they get T-boned by the driver that got bit, because, you know, he's zombified and he's lost... Con he's passed out and he's lost control. And whoever ends up on scenario A just depends on where the car ends up after the accident. It's a small detail, but it's kind of cleverly done, and it basically kind of shows that it was a coin flip that put either on one side or the other. But anyway, the randomizer gives us quite the arsenal to start with. We look we lucked out in a big way here. We actually have some ammo to play with. But begs the question of what's going to be out here, because you'll notice we don't have zombies yet. But yeah, long story short, that's basically what happened in the rest of the cutscene. We met Leon, got in a cop car, Claire grabs a gun, and we up in an accident thanks to the tanker, and now everything's on fire and we gotta get to the police station. Stay sharp. Well, you shouldn't worry. <laughs> oh shit, so it's Wesker! There. Damn it! Free of all this anyway. He's holding us up. <laughs> hey, Orange, good to Don't see you. Don't move. Oh, don't blame Barry for everything. We'll escape from here. Together. It's beautiful. There must be areas still to be explored in that dimension. <laughs> okay, so they appear to be using his classic model. I don't know. I don't remember the. I don't remember his model for the original game all that well. It's magnificent. I want to say it's the model from uh, Code Veronica, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah, they randomized the voices. So yeah, in the normal run of things, we end up at the gun shop, and the gun owner helps us here. In the original, he kind of makes a few sort of like sexist comments to Claire. That they that wasn't a factor in the remake because he only met Leon, but otherwise he locks the door and you know he stands close to the windows and just says, uh, you know, I'm keeping a close eye on things. Don't worry about it. And in a few minutes, a thing will happen. Paper dated September 18th. It looks irrelevant. <laughs> More useless trinkets. I'll burn all of them along with this entire laboratory. All right. Yeah, yeah. So basically, the gun store owner gets numb. Now, if we hurry... Nice. Alright, we might need to get the other item here. If I recall right. Ah, shit. Damn it. Could have used that green herb. But yeah, Wesker's dead. Now, basically, the rest of the, ser the series won't happen. Awesome. Alright. So yeah, kind of a lot to unpack with that one cutscene, because this was... This whole sequence was in the demo version as well. And in it, the Gunstone or owner was present. Son of a bitch, another green herb. The Gunstone owner, owner was present, but he didn't bother firing, firing at the zombies. This time, in the retail... In the release version, he did... And the shotgun actually had adjusted the ammo count to reflect this. Just kind of a small, interesting little attention to detail between uh, demo and release versions. Yeah, you can legit flag the end and be done with it. <laughs> Alright. Oh, that's still satisfying. Alright. Now we need to be careful, because the camera still wants our ass dead. Motherfucker, I... <laughs> okay. Res classic Resident Evil pro tip. When there's a zombie on the ground, always look for the pool of blood. If there's no blood, you ain't done. Hey, hey, Octal, good to see ya. Yeah, there's another one right there. So if we get close enough... Actually... Oh, wait a minute. Did that dude's head... Yeah! <laughs> awesome! So you can actually see his head turning towards me... As you walk around. I somehow never noticed this in the classic, and it might not even be a thing. It might be something the mod adds. That's great. I love it. <laughs> oh, we're gonna give this guy the... We're gonna give this guy... 
the classic treatment here. Oh, oh. Yeah. Knife to meet you. <laughs> Knife only runs were very much a thing in the classic Resident Evils and are still somewhat possible today. In uh, the modern ones, although less so in things like uh, Village. But it is a reliable backup weapon for the reason. Uh, we are using the BioRand mod, and it's basically a massive randomizer that, among other things, gave us a kick-ass starting inventory. We've got we've got uh, Claire's model from Code Veronica. We're changing character NPC models, randomized dialogue. It is nuts. Even the intro cutscene had a, uh, a different audio in it. Anyway. You know you're in a classic Resident Evil when you have to push an action button to... I saw that. What's down there? When you have to push an action button to go up or down stairs. <laughs> something something Jill sandwich. Quite. <laughs> hey, Fortune, good to see you. Oh, damn it. Okay, so big pr so on the one hand, nice we've got magnum bullets, but on the other hand, I don't have inventory for like pistol ammo. <laughs> uh this is great. Oh, wait a minute. I see that we got bees on the other side. Shit. Okay. Not using shotgun ammo on bees much as I might like to. Can we do this? Yeah, come here. Get it. Fucking get it. Now, this is interesting because Resident Evil didn't really respect vertical space in that sense. Like, it had enemies that could fly, but they were kind of sparingly used and only in situations where they could actually navigate. Like, you'll see here the bees can't actually cross the plane because they're not really designed to interact with the environment that way. Damage zones can still move up and down. That's why you're able to fire up and down on an act... On or you're able to fire up and down and hit things, but creatures can't always navigate that way. Like, you know, there, there were very few enemies that were designed to move between planes. Like, spiders would be one. They could be on walls and drop down from the ceiling. But if zombies spawned up there, they would be helpless because they wouldn't have a way to transition between them. So, the randomizer is really fascinating because it explores enemy behavior outside of the usual contact. Motherfucker! Speak of the devil. All right, let's dance. Yeah, you want a party? Let's go. Ah, oh, shit. I might be poisoned already. All right. Oh, bugger, bugger, bugger. <laughs> oh, right at the starting gate, we got problems. All right, what's in here? Oh, damn, I think that's machine gun ammo. Yeah, honestly, it's a very nice uh, HD update. They put an impressive amount of work into the models. Wait a minute. Okay, that was just Claire's ponytail, never mind. All right, I think what I'm gonna do is I will fire once, reload, then grab this, yes. We definitely want the machine gun ammo, that is uncommon. <laughs> sure, I've got blue herbs. Elsewhere in the game. <laughs> yeah, it's like that Anakin Padme meme. Okay. I think we're okay here, but once we go in... Interesting. So yeah, normally 
a bunch of zombies would get up around here. There are models in the map before us, but they don't actually get up or do anything until you go through here, at which point they bang on the gate, and yeah, it says it's too dangerous to go back outside. So the game actually does kind of a nice job herding you toward the police station. And confining you, but also giving you a sense of going through the city. So it feels, it, the game feels larger, and a reasonable expansion of the scope while still confining the gameplay and giving you a central location to work out of. Now, you do progress to another location after the uh, police station, but that's kind of a ways into the game. Anyway. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. We're already limping. I might have to bite the bullet and take that first aid spray. This has officially become a hunt for the cure. Robert Smith has been holding out on us. Oh, Jesus. Okay, yeah, nope. We have giant moths. I don't even remember these things. Ah, damn it! Get off of me! Hey! This is not going well. I do have the grenade launcher if things get dicey. Shit. Okay, yeah, this is... Hey! Ah, ow, 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 ow! Fuck you! All right. Oh, I think I see what it is. One of them was up on the upper plane with me, and the rest weren't. Can we shoot down at them? Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. All right, well, we are almost out of ammo. But aside from that, things are going great. Hey, all right. Instead of ammo, we get a card key. Great. More puzzle items. Oh, first aid spray. Fuck yeah. All right. Maybe we're gonna. Maybe we'll make it after all. I use the computer. Yes. Door lock service. It's not where that text is supposed to go. Yeah, a lot of that. Uh, anyway, um. A lot of that going around. Locked by a card key, huh? Hey, noise. So, yeah, one trick with randomizers is making sure the items arrange in a way that progression is still possible. And I find that interesting... That it, I find that to be an interesting challenge. Especially if you throw in things like door randomizers. Because, theoretically, if you're talking totally random, you could end up in a situation where a locked door... It, the, the item to open a door is stuck behind... The, it is stuck behind that same locked door, and you're screwed. So, obviously, there's some extensive work that has to be done to make sure that stuff is accessible, even if it's not accessible right Need away. Need a ride, handsome? Ooh, what do we got here? Oh, shit! Ada! Ugh, it's finally over! Okay, let's go! <laughs> Ada? Ada Wong? Nice to meet you, Ada. Oh, nothing. Just a giant cockroach that had to be stepped on. Can you hear me? There's some subtext to this dialogue, I tell you what. You'll be in danger if you stay with me. I know I've only known you for a short period of time, but I really enjoy being with you. Okay. Remember your promise. <laughs> Once he gets Ashley back, his job will be finished. He'll no longer be a factor. Oh, Ada. Don't ever change. Exactly, yeah. It verifies that the game is possible to finish and corrects any issues through backtracking. Yeah, yeah. It's a good amount of work. I... There's a good amount of work that goes into making sure that the player cannot bork themselves except through the RNG. Need a ride, Text on this way before. <sighs> Interesting. That was close. <sighs> now, Ada, say, you're not using that machine gun, are you? Here. Use this! Uh... 
Okay. Um. I Secret door. I'm sure it'll I'll open. Catch the you up. Okay, that's a no I then. I can't get the door open. Make one wrong move and I'll shoot. Yeah, you know I got a grenade launcher here, right? We can end this real quick. <sighs> so yeah, normally that would be a surviving but infected police officer. I forget his name. I think his name is Kenneth or something. Leon has more interactions with him in the remake, but here he works with whoever is the uh, Scenario A character. And he just gives you a thing to progress, which I believe... <laughs> he gave me a red herb. Awesome. Marvin, that's it. Oh, I know why. Yeah, I, I thought it was Kenneth because his last name is Brannock, but his name is Marvin Brannock. So I started thinking of the, the actor. Oh, Jesus. That's, that's Birkin. That is Birkin. Oh, boy, that's a boss. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I hate to do this, but we're probably going to have to use the first aid spray and rush past him. All right. Book it! All right. Yeah, I know. They need some eye drops on that. Nasty case of pink eye there. I mean, we could probably take him out, but I feel like they'd take all the grenade launcher ammo I've got. And we want it for whatever is going to replace the liquor intro here. What the fuck? What the f fuck was this? Okay, I think maybe that was one of the, like... The the the, du the ceiling walker dudes at the very end. I think they're just like claw called claws or something at the very end of the first game, and that might be replacing the liquor model here. Yeah, I have no idea what that was. Oh god, it's another one. Oh shit, I'm out. Run, Claire, run. Oh god, green herb. Alright, hold on a second. I'm gonna backtrack through there, grab whatever that is. With any luck, it'll be a blue herb and we can not die today. Okay, nope, we ain't going back. <laughs> There's no backwards in Resident Evil. There's onwards and upwards. Alright, windows boarded up. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh, Jeff! What was that? Oh god. Some weird leech critter. <laughs> yeah, I've gone too far. <laughs> oh man, okay. Okay, handgun bullets. That's That'll be great when I actually have a handgun. Actually, I shouldn't have picked that up. Shit. I think there's an item box nearby we can make use of. So one of the more annoying things about classic Resident Evil is sometimes they would have items that do not have a visible model, but you just kind of have to feel around and know they're there. Okay, oil painting. Title is A Sacrifice to the Hellfire. So yeah, that's a cue to use the lighter there. Alright, we'll see if we can get to an item box and dump some stuff off. One nice thing, those door animations are skippable. That's what I just did. So again, they do a lot of good things to... Oh god, that's a plant! Wait, let's see... Hold on a second. Right, the... The safe room was like the, the around the corner there, right in front of the plant, unfortunately. But yeah, one, one, they do some nice things to make this very PC-friendly. Although, honestly, you're def... For... These old tank controls, you really do want a con a you really do want a controller for it. There's just no way to make that feel comfortable on a keyboard. All right, safe room. Everything's gonna be okay. 
We finally have space again. Alright, in you go, in you go. In you go, in you go. In you go. I don't even know what to keep. I mean, we could keep the handgun ammo, but Lord knows if we're going to get a handgun anytime soon. We're just going to have to be bold. Oh, ho, 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 ho. look at this. Plants out, uh, right outside. We get a fucking flamethrower. God likes me today. He really, really likes me. I mean, you know. I assume this is just him be... Oh, we have the lighter. Shit, I could have solved that puzzle right away. Uh, some of the assets are custom-made. They are bringing in models from elsewhere in the series, including games that are long after the... Uh, that are several generations down the line. And, like I said, Claire's model is actually her Code Veronica outfit. So, presumably there was some work involved in... Ah, shit! Presumably there was some effort involved in bringing that up to date. Or back to date, I should say. Anyway. Alright. Okay. S shot bullets? What the fuck? Oh, it's a spark shot! Okay, yeah, that's a weapon we won't get for a normally won't get for a while. Oh, ink ribbons. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Alright, we are officially walking wounded here. All right, gonna drop some stuff off. I will make use of the ink ribbon here because this can go well or poorly depending on what we get next. Yeah, we'll go ahead and make a save here. Create new. Oh, nice. Looks like they have scenario completion saves by default. Interesting. I assume if you want to play with the unlockable goodies here, because there is a closet in here you can unlock with a special key if you're starting a new game plus. Alright, so... What I propose is we go back, try to finish off that liquor replacement. Hey Kirby! Solve the puzzle. Hope we get a blue herb out of this. And proceed. Yeah, yeah, right. Off of me, off of me, ow! Screw you. Hey, hey, hey! No free rides. Ow, 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 fuck you. If this kills me, I'm gonna be so... <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Well, there's one death. <laughs> Oh, uh, So we need to deal with this poison situation first. Before we can do anything else. So basically we need to think in terms of where the item spawns are. So I'm gonna go upstairs here. Because there is a puzzle we can solve real quick. Well, quick-ish. I think. Unless they change that. Oh god, fuck. Shit, damn it. No, 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 me. We go back this way. <laughs> also, I like that despite her limping animation, she climbs up and down stairs at a normal speed. Two at a time. Claire has places to be. Okay, diamond. Alright, we're gonna have to... Alright, we're gonna have to risk this. So here's what we're gonna do. Oh, shit. Damn it. Okay, we need a quick draw on this, so... Aim and fire. Yeah, come and get it! Wait for it. Wait for it. Come here, you. Come here, you. Got it. 
All right. All right, let's solve this here puzzle. Handgun ammo, why not? Oh, uh, this is going swimmingly. So it's just interesting that she's got the lighter the lighter. If I remember right, that was Leon's thing, and she had the lock pick. And there were a series of small locks that were replaced by that in Leon's campaign were replaced by a key. Or small keys or something. So that'll be interesting. Begging the question if if we get the lock pick at all. Or if they've handled that in some other way. Are you fucking for real? No, 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 no. They respawn? That's bullshit. Unless there was one more of those little bastards, which is possible. Alright. Alright, I'm gonna go back. We will deal with the weird shadow creature. How we doing on flamethrower ammo? Okay. Tank actually lasts for a fair bit. In that, at least, it is superior to the Bloodline's flamethrower. Ah! Hey! Hey! No touchy! <laughs> I might just be boned on this. Hey! Got him! Alright, so this is... <laughs> Okay, okay. Fuck you too, game. Fuck you too. <laughs> uh... Ah! No, no, no. Inside, inside. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, hmm. I wonder if there's a utility thing here. Invincibility off, test message, player Claire. El Elza Desnuda Cheat. Hmm. I have no idea what that is. We might have to cheat just a little bit to, to unscrew us here, which is... Perhaps running contrary to the spirit of the thing. Also, how do I get rid of the utility menu? Alright, I think if we can hobble to the top of the stairs and stun lock those things with a flamethrower, we might have a fighting chance here. If not, we will cheat just a little bit to force a blue herb. Come here, you. Alright. We might actually be able to do this. Alright. Actually, I probably should have dumped off the ink ribbon, but oh well. Come here, you. Damn, the flamethrower was beastly in this. I forgot how good it was. Of ammo here. Come here. Ah! <laughs> oh shit! Flamethrower out of ammo. Wonderful. All right. Well, with this obstruction done, at least we can dump this off and save again. <laughs> I know, right? That's kind of what I like about these. They inject a drama that wasn't necessarily in the game previously. Because you have to sort of unlearn your memories of where everything is and improvise based on what you find. And, you know, that does lead to situations like this where we're 
poisoned and just shuffling along basically helpless. But that's the risk you take, and the highs are the drama that comes up. The highs are the emergent drama that comes from having to find things anew, to essentially relearn the game and exploit every... exploit your knowledge of it to the, to the utmost, as you have to fight old enemies on new terrain, take advantage of glitches, maximize your, your loot because you might not get it again, or you might not get what you need when you need it, It is fascinating, and it is easy to see why stuff like this has uh, gotten more commonplace. Alright. Knob turns, the door won't budge, seems to be sealed from the other side. Alright. Now, if I recall right, this is a pretty simple puzzle. God of the sun and God of the moon, their gaze upon me is the only thing that can release Red Soul. Uh -huh. See if we can uh, galaxy brain our way through this puzzle here. All right, give me that item. Please, God, be a blue herb. Hey, flame rounds! Holy shit! Okay, not a blue herb. Only two of them. Fuck me. Well, that'll be handy for the grenade launcher, but two rounds isn't worth going back for, unless we need them right now. Yeah. Well, that's the, th that's the thing, Kren. This whole... This built on the lore of Resident Evil in a weird way, and made it so that the... Like, weird puzzles that happened in the first game were less the one-off work of a madman and more a recurring theme. Ow, 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 now, ow. <laughs> okay. We're not going in there. Ever. But yeah, the, the fact that... Simultaneously... It does kind of imply that the same conspiratorial forces behind Umbrella that built the mansion are also deeply involved in the town, but the sheer nonsensicalness of it, for lack of a better word, does kind of strain credulity. Okay, so... Somehow we're going to have to make... Two flame grenades hit four targets. The alternative is generating another seed, but, uh, eh. We're kind of in too deep at this point. Alright, so one option we can do is head back to the main hall and see if the east wing is, unlo is unlocked. I believe it is locked, but at this point there's literally no harm in checking. Actually, wait, no, the leeches are out there. Shit, damn it. Alright, no, I think we're gonna have to... Hmm. Actually... You know what? Hold on a second. Let me see if the uh, let me see if the debug menu will let me teleport there. RPD courtyard, back street, gun shop. Uh, you know what? We'll go back to the gun shop. We'll get the green herb, and we will mix that with a red herb, and we'll just go down swinging here. All right, where's that gun shop at? Here we go. <laughs> oh, that put me right in the wrong position there. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. I think we're going to have to generate a new random seed here. I think I am just screwed.
Are you fucking for real? Son of a... Oh. Oh, you little whores. Okay, since the random seed didn't generate, we're going to do one more thing here. I am actually going to load my previous save. We are going to cheat just a wee bit. Just enough to get us through to something else. Because it's not... Let's see. Utility menu, invincibility, on. Alright. I will accept fair play on my own time. But again, for demonstration purposes, I want to get to, this, to at least another cutscene and see who shows up. Come on, let's party! <laughs> ah! Alright, let's see here. What do we have? It's going to be something for progression. of young man. There's a good chance it's a boyfriend. So this is interesting, because Claire is here looking for her brother, Chris. And that is actually Chris's jacket from the first game. It's an unlockable. Hey, green herb. Yay. Ooh. Film. Alright. Ink ribbon, of course. Come on, now. Gotta be something else here. Alright, trash. Someone must have searched the desk. Marks contest winner, Chris Redfield. Alright, so I guess we're expected to go back to the dark room. Oh, hey! Someone just sent a fax that finally went through. This is extremely 1998. Oh! Thank Christ, blue herb at last. Oh, thank you, mysterious fact sender, whoever you are. You are a lifesaver. Ah, uh, everything is wonderful again. All right. Beautiful, beautiful. We are gonna be okay, folks. We're gonna make it. We are all gonna make it, every last one of us. All right, let's turn invincibil invincibility back off. Where's the, uh, here we go. Yay! <laughs> uh, that's the little things, eyes. Alright. Now I might want to grab those fire grenades, because we can actually live long enough to kill something now. Also, interesting note that when you play through in the scenario B, these puzzles had all reset. And it's kind of interesting to imagine someone painstakingly going through the police station one at a time. Some of them you didn't have to redo, but most of them you did. Alright. Finally, we're healed up. Thank Christ. Right. Yeah, it works with fixed camera angles, but they do kind of suck as the thing. And that is something you need to design very carefully so the player is not at a disadvantage against the enemies, and they kind of don't with Resident Evil. Hey! First aid spray. All right. So clearly we're in some... So between the blue herb getting faxed to me and developing film to turn it into... Uh, turn it into a first aid spray, we're clearly working on some mystical properties here where drawn items can become real. Gotta grab the, uh, yeah, Lancer printer style, exactly. We have, th we have 3D printers in 1998. Alright. Now, burning question. Where do we go next? Because, if I call right... Once we get that... Oh, wait, I remember. I think we go back down to the main hall, and that's where she bumps into Leon or another character, and then she gets an item to progress. 
Either way, back to the main hall for us. Now we do have to be mindful. I do. Oh, no, you don't. Right, we'll solve the puzzle while we're here. Avoid the little leech bastards. But yeah, it's an interesting contrast playing these older games with the examples of the newer ones that go by, and I kind of appreciate the simplicity of design more and more. Where the original games were comparatively simple in terms of scenario construction and narrative... Oh, can I go in here? Spade is etched under the keyhole. No. Yeah, they were comparatively simple in terms of the way the story played out, but they were more flexible in terms of progression, and... Hang on a second. Oh, there's an item box here! Shit! More flame rounds. Nice. Hey, five flame rounds! Now we're talking. Yeah, they were a little less rigid in how you went through the environment. It didn't quite feel like you were obligated to go from A to B to C in terms of... in terms of unlocking things, even though the game very much did require you to get some key items before others. And I, I, I kind of miss that. Like, it's rare when these games would give you an actual objective with something on the map to indicate where specifically you're going to go next, and half the mystery of them was exploring your situation, learning what the creatures are, learning what areas are safe. Okay, so this door is open. Alright. And gradually learning how to deal with enemies. Okay, so there are dogs there, so we need to be careful. Basically, I miss the exploratory and adventure gamey element of these older games. Where you don't quite know what's behind a door, and once you do... Ah, shit. Ah! And once you do, it becomes a game of resource conservation. That you're not necessarily expected to fight and kill every standing enemy. And it's only about whether you want to spend the ammo, health, etc. on clearing a path that you intend to use uh, frequently. Nice! Two for one! Anybody up for hot dogs? Ha <laughs> ha! Alright. Hey! Heart key. Sweet. Alright, I actually have George Scott. I also kind of miss the ability to poke at the environment and get little clues on it. Get, get, get text feedback on what you're looking at. Seems to be an office over there. It brings back that kind of adventure gamey feel where you are meant to explore the environment and look for contextual clues about how to proceed. That wasn't really the case... Like, it wasn't really the case in a mechanical sense. You didn't necessarily need to poke at everything to proceed. But it gave the world... A, it, it gave the environment a bit more of a... It made the environment feel a little more fleshed out. Oh boy. That's a liquor. Where'd it go? Okay, so wait a minute. If that... If those things in the west hallway weren't liquors, then what the hell did I fight? Alright, this much I do remember. If you walk around them, they won't necessarily go aggro on you. Yeah, this is a case of the camera angles definitely trying to get me killed here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle around here, hit him from a blind side. Where'd he go? Ah, 
When in doubt, check the auto aim. This was a thing starting in the second game where your auto aim would point you in the direction of where a critter is if they if you had line of sight. There we go. Uh, you got exactly one shot left. Whee. All right. Fuel, huh? Ooh, is that flamethrower fuel? Yes! Oh, baby! Now, this is interesting because in the original game, there was no extra flamethrower fuel. It was a weapon that Leon briefly got, and all you had was what was in the tank. So, getting more ammo for that is actually very interesting, and very helpful. Oh, finally! Finally, God is on our side again. Checkmate, atheists. Safe, huh? Anything in here? Numerical keypad? Eh. Alright, if I call right, yes. Green herb, don't mind if I do. This game is all about herbal remedies. <laughs> exactly, RNG just smiles upon me. Ooh! Nice. Okay, one grenade round. Better than nothing. So, another pro tip. There will only ever be one enemy model on a map outside very... I think there may have been one or two exceptions, but it'll always either be one thing or the other. It won't necessarily be zombies and dogs or zombies and spiders. So, if you see a zombie model on a map with non-zombie enemies, it's safe to poke at that thing. It won't get up. Alright, heart key. Key is useless now. Discard. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Is this door open? It is. Nice. <laughs> Alright, Jesus, yeeteth forth, and your Alright, Jesus, yoinketh away. This is very true. Ooh, small key. Nice. Now, I know where that goes. Oh, baby, yes, here we go. Yep, what it has given, it can very easily take away. You're gonna have so much handgun ammo. Okay, so we actually got some options on how to proceed here. But first, let's exploit the teleport thing here. This is very much reminding me of repeat runs through Baldur's Gate, especially the sequel, where you would abuse the instant move cheat to get across screens quickly, you had to repeat. Uh, over and over. This was especially an issue in the second game if you signed up with the Shadow Thieves because there was a long corridor leading to the uh, leading to the boss's office. Ooh, Magnum parts. <laughs> It'd be nice if we had the freaking gun. Yeah, there'd be a long corridor leading to the boss's office that you'd be expected to, tra to traverse again and again. And at some point, it was at some point, even the most stalwart of adventures just says, fuck it, I'd rather teleport through this. It's very much like the Waking Sands in Final Fantasy XIV, just the game sends you back there an annoying amount of times. Alright, so it does stack that, small mercies at least. Well, longer we're back here, we'll see what else is in that next hallway. We won't go for too much longer, but I am kind of curious. I want to I wanna get to at least the next uh, cutscene and see who we get in place of Sherry. Because Claire's companion was the was the young girl Sherry, and the game actually, I mean, it, the game would have had to structure the cutscenes around the character model, so I'm curious who they're going to cram in her space, and how Claire's model will react to that. Hmm. Be ready. Oh no! Oh no! It's Mr. X! <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Okay, so Mr. X is going to give it to us after all. <laughs> Shit. Oh god, do we even have enough to bring him down? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if four grenades is going to be enough. <laughs> yeah, X is going to give it to us indeed. Good and hard, apparently. Alright. 
We're going to look around and see if there is something else we can use to stop him. Oh no. What is it? Oh god! <laughs> bosses, bosses everywhere! Precinct key. Okay, that's the club key. Precinct key. Diamond key. Sweet! <laughs> We've got all the keys to get around and none of the fucking weapons. <laughs> Oh, this is gonna suck ass. Okay. Second floor. <laughs> hey, Mirage. Good to see you. Oh, locked from the inside. Son of a bitch. All right. Arc Knight's laying on the drama heavy. I know you were talking about that event uh, recently. Imagine they're twisting the knife most efficiently. Okay, looks like we're gonna have to give it to Mr. X right back. So much work. Oh boy. Yep, yep. There are gacha games that twist the knife, and there are gacha games that whip out, whip out a second knife and just go to fucking town. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We are going to put the keys away. Because if I recall right, the one in the... Uh, the one on the west hallway was a spade key. That's the one we don't have. Alright, so we're going to put this in here. This in here. Make us an herb combo. Let's go see if we got enough firepower to bring down Mr. X. I do remember distinctly that Mr. X's first appearance in this game was very well done, and that you very much hear him before you see him. It's just that heavy thudding of footsteps getting closer and closer, and then he rounds the corner in full view with the camera angle deliberately pointed. It's very well done. I honestly prefer that introduction to how it's done in the uh, remake. Okay. Okay. Ah, shit. Okay. Get behind him. Oh, what the fuck? Are you fucking for real? There are two of them. On three of them. Unfair. Un <laughs> unfair. Oh, Jesus Christ. Then there's a diamond thing. I gotta get the diamond key. Are you fucking for real? <laughs> oh, the spark shot. Okay, this ain't gonna... Yeah, for all the good that's gonna fucking do. Locked. <laughs> <laughs> the club key! The keys I just discarded go to these fucking doors. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Peace is hard, no order counts, it hates you, preserver was right to be mad. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, oh god, okay, okay, these things again. Okay, hold on. Kind of a lot's happening. Okay, so... Okay. All right, we need to clear. Ah, son of a bitch. Nope, oh, get off. Damn it. Hey, hey. All right, you know what? Go ahead and take your stupid bite. Imagine finding an incomprehensible precursor artifact and using it as a hat. Yeah, I can imagine they would... F they would, uh find fault with that. I imagine they, that would not go over well. Okay, green herb. Awesome. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is this the room where a liquor break, breaks through? Oh, no, I don't think so. It's in the other room because it's the one way... It's the magic mirror. So, yeah, if you go in that room on the other side of it and then cross the mirror again, a liquor breaks through and God only knows what it is here. Okay, so... Okay. It is theoretically possible to juke our way past the Mr. X's. But then we gotta get back here with the fucking keys. Alright. Okay. Ah! Okay, might just have to take the blows. And then dodge the uh, overhead swing. Oh, mother... 
motherfucker, this is mean. I might have enough to bring down Birkin in the hallway over there. Huh. Ha 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 ha. You know what? It's worth a try. Or at least I might be able to get past him. Alright, let's give it a try. Okay. You know what? Let's go ahead and heal. Okay, he's up. Maybe I can get on his... Hey! <laughs> it bounced off the environment! He can't actually hit me. His pipe bounces off the environment. Awesome. Okay, that clearly works. How many shots does this thing have, anyway? Okay, it's got quite a few. Drop already. Hmm. Okay. You know what? If I remember right, this boss, if you do enough damage, he sort of meanders toward a midpoint and then falls off. It's kind of a scripted thing. So maybe he's technically dead and won't attack us? Fingers crossed. We'll find out. God damn it, the club key. Alright. Situation possibly resolved. Ah, <laughs> yes! It's got the Resident Evil, uh, the Dreamcast ver version. The music from that. Perfect. Okay, so this music played in the Dreamcast port. Or, it was either the Dreamcast or the 64 port of classic Resident Evil. And this, for some reason, was on the soundtrack for that location. Which, of course, was not the original song. Awesome. Right, it wasn't the Dreamcast version. I think it was... I, th I think it was the N64, but I'm honestly not too sure. I'll have to look that up. Anyway, we're good on ammo. Unfortunately, this thing one-shot zombies. So actually not doing too bad. Beautiful. Alright, hallway clear. Alright, power room, huh? I need an item. Oh, not these moths again. Fuck that. Fucking moths. Everywhere we go is just... something nasty. Okay, weapon storage. That's locked. Where does this go? Autopsy room. Locked. Club key. Of course. And where does this go? Almost certainly something out here. I think there were usually dogs. Maybe. Is there something in the corner? I don't think so. Oh, it's a manhole. Manhole that is open, ladder leads down. Uh, not just yet. Actually, where were the other places go? You know what? Yeah, alright, might as well go down. Yeah, go visit the crocodile. Right, okay. Yeah, I think all the other doors were locked. Although, I don't think I checked the parking lot yet. Oh, 
Oh, come on. Are you fucking for real? Oh, Jesus Christ. The safe room has enemies, those little bastards. Whoa, what? Hey, we managed to stop the train. What the hell? This way. Okay, there's a lot of questions I have here. That is... It's sheer perfection. Okay, Roger, that... I'll put the brake on now! That is Billy from Resident Evil Zero. And I think that's supposed away? to be... William Birkin? <laughs> he managed to stop the train. <laughs> you don't get away that easily. Oh, God. I'm afraid our little chat time Okay, is okay. Over. So normally Sherry goes that way. And oh my god. Okay, so this is the section where we briefly play as Sherry. Yeah, we're William Birkin now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh this is great. So it actually changes the model for the character we usually control as. So yeah, the thing with Sherry is she climbs through there because she's short enough. And does a brief section without Claire. He appears to have shrunk, yes. And now the problem is, Sherry does this section without a weapon, because she's just a kid. So God only knows what we do here. Oh god. That is a boss creature, I think. I mean, it's a fairly s simple section. It just has her dodge, like, I think one zombie. Normally. But us being completely unarmed changes things a wee bit. Oh god, what? <laughs> what the hell? Oh god. Okay, I think that was a hand creature. Like, when you run through the hallways that are boarded up, there are... S the, at one point, there are these hands that burst through and grab you. They don't actually do any damage. They can't stop you or anything. They, they just slow you down. But they are technically creatures that the player interacts with. Like, holy shit. Okay. <laughs> this has gotten wild. Okay, I remember this. This is a puzzle where we have to build the uh, water ridge here. So you can see that the game is still set up to recognize a smaller model than we actually have. Because when we step on stuff, William briefly clips through it. Because Sherry normally needs time to hoist herself up. So, what we do... Yeah, that's normally her animation. And also because she's smaller, it takes her longer to push stuff. So this is actually kind of hilarious. Again, it's bringing to mind the Malkavian mod from Deus Ex. Just mix things around and see what chaos emerges. And I can respect that. Alright, then we hit this thing. And problem solved. Classic Resident Evil puzzle. All that for an ink ribbon. Awesome. Alright. All right, let's see if we can sneak by this thing. Alright, so not too big a problem there. Classic Resident Evil bosses usually weren't too mechanically interesting. The first games were fine. Like, you had the giant snake, you had the giant spider. There were some interesting things about... There were some interesting elements to them in contrast... Oh, there's another blue herb, of course. There were interesting things about them in contrast to... Uh, the other enemies. But mechanically, they were usually just simple arena fights with fairly simple maneuvers. And pretty much just damage sponges that you just... There, you know, there was nothing special about the way you fought them, basically. I want to say it wasn't really until Code Veronica that they started getting interesting with that. Hey, it's Hello? Leon! Claire, are you there? Claire! The security office? Don't forget. 
<laughs> All of right, course. so Rebecca's our model. Before I forget, here's a radio. There's Leon just sinking into the floor. One last thing. Here's a radio. Take it. <laughs> no! Uh, this is a gem. No! I promised you that we would escape. You just have to help me out here. What was that all about? Running off like that was reckless and stupid. <laughs> this must be... <sighs> Oh, this is art. I love this. Ow. Come on, Claire, pick up the items. Oh, here we go. Alright, so we're done here. Let us cl clean house a little bit. Oh, what a day it has been. Yeah, I think we'll call it there. Let me grab that ink ribbon and save. Appears to be our last one anyway. <laughs> hey, flamethrower fuel, awesome. Uh, six percent. That'll make a difference against three fucking Mr. Rexes. Ah. But yeah, we will call it there. That is Biorand. I really enjoy this. It is a nice compilation of the original games. The randomizer goes way further than I was expecting, and it presents... Like, it is, beyond beyond the craziness of it, I really do appreciate how the changes in item placement and enemy placement requires you to rethink how to progress through the game. It's less about solving a campaign and more about solving a puzzle. You're trying to figure out how essentially a random number generator spat things out and improvising on the fly based on what mercies and punishments it has for you. I really do like this, and I really appreciate the work they put in and I am definitely going to poke at this some more. So yeah, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Have a good night. Uh, no stream next week. I will be out of town on vacation, starting from Saturday to Saturday, so we'll be starting on Techno Babylon when I get back, hopefully, on the 26th. So have a good night, and see you next time.